John chapter 8. John chapter 8 <clears throat> and verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. There's no more doubt. Well, you can make some comparisons and some typology. Jesus just said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, I'm a Christian, but, you know, I still go to the bars and I still hang out with the old crowd. And I still, you know, I go went back to my heavy metal band that I was, you know, once part of before I got <coughs> saved. Um, I'm still still loved by the world. I, I still get along and I, you know, still go to the church building I used to go to before I got saved. And, you know, I still enjoy some, you know, Hollywood movies and some, you know, getting drunk occasionally. And, you know, I still enjoy my nice smoky cigarettes and my drugs and whatever else but you know nah, no you don't walk in darkness anymore the lord will sanctify that stuff out of your life over time not right away god will take some time the process of sanctification can, can take many years i'm still going through the process of sanctification i have not arrived yet at some kind of sinless perfection thing or something else even a lot of people try to teach that about me, that I teach sinless perfection. I've never taught that. I've spoken against it, actually. So just be careful what you listen to about me. But um, if you are saved, the light of Jesus Christ and his word will come into your life and you will be different than the lost world. Look at verse 13, John chapter 8, verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Isn't it interesting that Jesus says, you'll have the light, like we've been proving, and it'll be in your life, and there'll be no darkness in there. And they say, what do they say? They don't say, hey, we disagree. We, we agree to disagree here. Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. There's a lot of Pharisees out there that hold their traditions above this book right here, and they'll attack this book, and they'll say, this record, the Word of God, the light, um, it's not true. It has errors. It has problems. It has contradictions. It should be translated better. It should be updated to modern English. It should be. They're rejecting the light. And in doing so, they're rejecting Jesus Christ. Hmm. John chapter 9. Turn to John chapter 9, verses 3 through 5. Jesus answered. Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, which while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hmm. Did the uh, first century disciples of Jesus, did they have the completed scriptures like we do? No. No. They had Jesus physically there. They could go to him and ask him and things and whatever else and live by his example and, and whatever. Um, we don't have Jesus physically on the earth anymore in terms of the man walking around, but we have this book, our King Jesus version, that can lead us into the truth. And if, you, if you're dumb enough out there to, to call me an idolater and you have a problem, Brian, and everything else, you're putting, holding that book up too high, bye bye you don't belong here watching these videos you don't understand what I'm saying John chapter 11 John chapter 11 verses 9 through 10 Jesus answered are there not 12 hours in the day if any man walk in the day he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world but if a man walk in the night he stumbleth because there is no light in him if you don't have this book, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, if you don't have it hidden in your heart, if this book is not guiding you and leading you, you're going to stumble in the darkness. I mean, why do you think there's so much false organized religion out there? Those people are wicked. They're hypocrites. You go to these church buildings, they'll mess you up badly. Send your children to a, a little uh, Christian camp or whatever, there's a good chance they'll get molested by one of the counselors. Happens all the time. And then they go to back to the pastor or whatever else, and they try to say, hey, you know, 
my son here got molested by the, oh you know or the child comes and says oh pastor uh, brother so and so over there he touched me inappropriately oh let's not talk about this and whatever why because they're walking in darkness <laughs> I don't go near these church buildings I won't go near them why because pretty much all of them they don't believe this book they don't believe this book there are some that profess to believe it that's why I said that gave a little bit of a clause there there are some that profess to believe it but they don't follow it no church building pastor none of them follow this book not one of them they'll say well you know yeah I know there's no church buildings in the New Testament I didn't know I know there's no suit and tie and I know that no 10% tithe or whatever else but <sighs> We're, all, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. No, you're not. That's a lie. And the fact that you can stand there and continue to say that lie and repeat that lie without any conviction doesn't say too much for you. Pretty bad. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 35 through 36. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. Then these things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. Huh. Believe in the light. I thought the Bible teaches to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It does. But it also says believe in the light. Hmm. Interesting. Jump down to verse 44 of the same chapter. John chapter 12, verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. You can't continue in darkness. You cannot abide there. Abide means that you're continuing in it. And if any man hear my words, I thought we were talking about light. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Jesus put it in writing. You don't want to follow the written word of God. Um, you have a problem. You have some very big surprises coming in eternity. Well, I'm a Christian, but I, you know, I do a lot of things that aren't really in the Bible. and the, you know, Okay, a few things that the Bible kind of condemns, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's to say if it's really wrong? The Bible is. This book condemns you. Verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. The Father being the soul speaks through the flesh of God. The Lord Jesus Christ. It's really not that difficult if you understand these things. Acts chapter 9. But again, we see another tie in to light and the Word. It's just undeniable. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Here we read the story of Saul. Uh, later becoming Paul, but uh, what happens to him? What comes down out of heaven? Let's read. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings, threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, and if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light hmm. from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou Lord <laughs> he didn't under I mean what a statement he didn't say uh, who are you period 
He said, Who art thou, Lord? He knew that the light that was coming, it couldn't have been anybody but God. But he's saying in his own way, I don't really know who you are. I'm worshiping you through my fake Judaism here, my, my uh, traditions of men. I worship you through that, but I don't really know you personally. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said unto and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Again, an interesting thing there. Lord, who art thou? I'm Jesus. Oh, wait, you're Jesus? Well, that guy? Oh, yeah, I reject him. Now, we stoned Stephen a while back because he said about, he looks up into heaven, he sees Jesus, you know, there. And, uh, no, I, I reject Jesus. Why did Paul accept, reject Jesus in Acts 7, but accept Jesus in Acts 9? Why was that? Um, probably because there was some light revealed. Has the light of God's word revealed anything in your life. It has in mine. I was in darkness and I wanted light and God gave it to me. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Verses 5 through 7. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shine in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. The angel of the Lord showed up. That's Jesus Christ. He shows up and the light is there. It's like the Mount of Transfiguration. Hmm. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through 32. says here, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone, everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are, we are all here. Then he called for a light hmm. um, and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. What an interesting little thing there. If you understand the symbology that we've been going over here in the word of God, the word is is a light. Hmm. He calls for a light. And what do they give him? They preach to him the word of God. You know, that's the only chance that a lost man has to be saved. I'm in darkness. I'm about ready to kill myself. Grab the sword. I'm, I'm ready to run it through myself. I have no reason to live. Everything's so dark. I just, I want light. The Lord says, I'll get it to you. Here's my word. How can we witness to people? How can we see people truly get saved if we don't teach that this book is God's word and we don't stand by the perfection of the King James Bible? How in the world can we get to people? We can't. Just look like a bunch of hypocrites. Well, you know, I, I want you to get saved. I want to tell you how to go to heaven when you die. Well, how do I do that? We well, have to believe in Jesus Christ. Well, how, how do you know that? Well, because the Bible, the Word of God says it. Well, oh, this book right here, this book's perfect? Well, no. All, all Bibles have translational errors and things. See, it makes no sense. 
I'd, I'd like some light. I need some light. Um, okay, we'll uh, we'll tell you about uh, this guy named Jesus, and we're pretty much just going to tell you, you know, our opinions on him and things. And no, they preached to him the word of the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter four. book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 beginning in verse 3 but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost hmm. in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them the image of God is Jesus Christ he is the light of of the world. Hmm. Oh, the image of uh, God the Son, I guess, not God the Father or God the Spirit. No, there's only one God. God the Father is a biblical title. God the Son appears nowhere in Scripture. God the Holy Spirit appears nowhere in Scripture. You have to understand that. It's very important to understand that. Um, but let's continue here. Um, uh, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're looking at Jesus standing there. The light that's coming from him is God. It's not some light that came upon him when he was baptized or something. Then it left him when he died on the cross. That's New Age Satanism. No, he is God manifest in the flesh. A body was prepared so he could go down and feel pain, born of the Virgin Mary. And he comes out and here he is, a walking, talking man. He can feel pain. He knows when it's cold. He knows when it's hot. He bleeds. He feels the suffering of the cross. And he brings light. And when he's not there physically on the earth, then this book brings that light. This book tells you all about Jesus Christ. That's why you can nickname it the King Jesus Version. Okay, This book was never officially called the King James Version. That was a nickname. It was the authorized version. And you know, again, I'm not trying to rewrite history here. I mean, King James Video Ministries, it's my ministry. I'm not going to rename it King Jesus Video Ministries or something. Um, King James Video Ministries. That's the way it is. But it's no sin to call it the King Jesus version, you know, as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light? with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with, with an infidel? Hmm. Uh, I want you to notice the very, very important word there um, in verse uh, oh, where is it here? Verse 14. What communion hath light with darkness. What do you think of when you think the word communion? Somebody says, do you do communion or whatever else? You think of the you know, bread and the wine, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper there. That's what you think about. Hmm. We're going to be getting to that in future studies there. But, uh, you know, communion equals flesh and blood. We'll see about that in the future. But again, notice the tie-in to what happened back in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 through 5 it talks about God separating the light from the darkness huh and our text here says what communion hath light with darkness hmm Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 through 14. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. 
For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Look at this, verse six or verse eight. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. John 17, 17. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. How can you prove if you have no Bible? My feelings are just as good as your feelings, aren't they? I have my opinions, my preferences, and whatever else. But you know what? When it comes right down to biblical truth, to the light that's revealed, your opinions don't matter. Neither do mine. What sayeth the Scriptures? Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Christ shall give thee light. Do you understand? You cannot judge anything in this world unless you have the light of God's word. You have to have a perfect standard. And this book is it. The King Jesus Version. Colossians uh, 1. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. See it there again. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the, preemin the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Okay, so again, you see there, the saints in light, right? Um, verse 12, made partakers of the saints in light, in whom, we, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So is there a connection between light and blood? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's all tied into Jesus Christ. And by the time I get done with this whole study, you will see that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do." 
Look at the distinction. I mean, how can, how can you not see this unless you're completely lost? There's light and there's darkness. We're not of the darkness. We're not of the night. We're of the day. We are children of light. If you are saved, there's supposed to be that light there. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13, down through verse 16. I charge thee, I, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, commandment tied to the word of God, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Dwelling in the light. The light of Jesus Christ. The light of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The glory of the Lord. It all ties together, brethren. Thy word is a light unto my feet. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the light. Do you understand me? I reject the King James Bible, but I, I, I reject this, but I love Jesus. It's not possible. It is not possible. You cannot say that you reject Jesus Christ and you hate the King James Bible. It cannot happen. There are people that might be ignorant. Whatever else, they heard the gospel, they got saved, they put their faith in Jesus Christ and whatever, the Lord saves them, but the Lord, will, he'll lead you to this book. Plain and simple. And people can come up with all kinds of philosophical argumentation and everything else against this blessed book right here, but I don't know why people would want to do that unless they're in darkness. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 10 Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began." Hmm. but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Life comes from the light of the gospel? Hmm. I thought that was rather interesting. 1 Peter chapter 2. Turn back to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 9 through 10. See what all the Bible has to say about the thing of light and life and the word of God. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light oh, I'm into philosophers I'm into the Buddha or Confucius the Quran the you know Talmud the whatever Kabbalah any other kind of witchcraft nonsense that you want to get into um, you're in darkness God needs to call you out of that stuff and get you into the light of the Word of God verse 10 which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. It's good to be in God's marvelous light, isn't it? Second Peter chapter 1. Go to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, 
when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. I'm an eyewitness of the majesty of this book right here. This book has done more for me than anything else in this world. Verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What's he referring to? He's referring back to the Mount of Transfiguration. He was there. He saw it. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. See? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. This book. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God. You mean Peter that denied him and cussed in front of lost people. You mean Paul that murdered Christians before he got saved. Holy men of God. Absolutely. Why? Christ's righteousness is imputed. I'm a holy man of God. I am. Not because of my own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ which is upon me. I'm in the light, you see. The light guides my life. Light needs to guide your life as well. First John chapter one. First John chapter one, beginning in verse one. That which we have, excuse me, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have hand, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. Huh. A reference to Jesus Christ. The word of life. His hands handled it. He touched Jesus Christ. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. I thought Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Oh, yeah, there's another passage that says that Jesus is God. God is light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. This is that light that cometh into the world that lighteth every man. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Huh. Rather interesting there. Keep your hand right there. It says there, remember, um, we have fellowship, our, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. Okay? Keep your hand there in John, 1 John 1, and go back to John, the book of John, chapter 6. And we're going to be going into this chapter in great detail in a future study and going through what it actually is talking about. Um, John chapter 6, verse 57. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. All right? Um, there's a fellowship there. There's a relationship between the Father and the Son. And we're supposed to have a similar relationship with the Lord. And I'll be getting into that, like I said, um, in a future study. And you say, what's well, talking about the eating there? It's talking about the flesh and the blood. Uh, well, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Verse 7, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. How do we go from talking about the light and the Word and the life and the blood Huh. Do you think that there might be a tie-in between all of that? That's what this study is going to prove. 1 John chapter 2. 
First John chapter 2, verse 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother, brother abideth in the light, and there is no, none occasion of stumbling in him. He that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. You will have true love for the brethren, not for false converts. Okay, <laughs> Please understand that. There are a lot of false con converts out there, and I have no love for them. I love them enough to tell them the truth, but that's where it stops. But my love for them is, like I said, it's just a, I'm worried about you. I want to see you get saved. But a true brother in the Lord, somebody that's genuinely saved, I do love them. Even if we have some differences of opinion, okay, I'll go my way, you go your way. Kind of like Paul and Barnabas. That's what they did. But you have to be careful of this thing because a lot of people will say, well, you hate so-and-so. He's your brother in Christ. No, he preaches a different gospel than I do. He's not my brother in Christ. You have to watch out for that one. Okay? And, of course, you go into the thing of the old commandment and a new commandment there in that passage as well, which I believe is referring to the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing there, which we will be getting into as we progress through our studies. John chapter 15. Go back to the book of John chapter 15. John 15. <clears throat> verse 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Without this book you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, important, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. The reading too there. God's word has to abide in you. I can abide in Jesus and I can just forget the book here. I don't need this light. I can just stumble around through the dark world out there. It's okay. I don't really need the light. Um, if you're to that point, if you've watched this whole thing and we're up to this point and you are staying, you don't really need to have a faith in this book and no translations inspired and we don't really have the perfect word of God, you'll just kind of wing it and, you know, fake it till you make it. Um, I just don't know what to tell you. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verses 10 through 11. What do we have in eternity? You say, well, see, we, we, okay, we need the King James Bible, you know, on the earth and whatever else, but what do we have when we get into eternity? Revelation 21, verse 10 through 11. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Hmm. Rather interesting. The word of God is likened to water. The washing of water by the word. Ephesians chapter 5. Good water is clear as crystal. Hmm. Light that's clear. Rather interesting. 
Revelation 21, verses 23 through 27. Go down there. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Hmm. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither worketh whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Written. Light. The Word. Life. You see how, how it all ties together? You see why if you're saved you need to believe in this book? You can't just say, I believe in some Jesus out there that kind of exists or whatever else. You need to believe in this book. Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the, of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they, shall, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Hmm. So what, do we, what have we learned? Jesus is the Word. The Word brings light. The light gives life. Life is connected to blood. Hmm. We're going to continue to tie this whole thing together here. It's a very big study. A lot of scriptures to go through. I'm trying to take my time here and say things correctly and properly and whatever else. But uh, brethren, I just hope that you understand when we get through this study that uh, the whole purpose and direction of this is not to bring people closer to Brian Denlinger and to have people worship me as the greatest preacher that's ever lived or something else. or uh, Brother Brian is the greatest. You know. It's about this Bible right here, this King James Bible. The same book that I've been preaching for years and years and years. I've dedicated my life to this book right here. And I will live by this book and I will die by this book. Um, that's the whole purpose of this ministry, to turn people to the Word of God, to strengthen your faith in this blessed book right here. So that is going to be it for this study. The next one that we will be doing will be the Water and the Blood of the King Jesus Version. We finished up there in Revelation chapter 22 and there's a pure river of life. Water, pure water that comes out clear as crystal. And we're going to talk next about the water and the blood. So that will be the next sermon in the series. And uh, please tune into that and uh, please meditate upon what I've told you um, today. Think about it. So that is going to be it and we will see you in the next study. Thank you very much for watching.